Hello everyone, this is Greg Soul, and I'm going to be giving a presentation today on accessing geo-locked content the easy way. So who am I? I've got a bunch of certifications. I work for a data center. I'm also a consultant, gregsoul.com. I'm an author at lynda.com and uh, LinkedIn Learning. You can find me there in some of my courses. Pop in, I do a lot of networking and Cisco stuff there. Also, I am very proud to be part of the brotherswisp.com. Uh, it's a WISP focus. Well, I mean, it's loosely focused on WISP networking, but there's a lot of networking in there. It's a podcast. We also have a uh, community Slack. So if you become a patron, patreon.com forward slash the brothers wisp, you can jump in and grab lots of good content off our patron only Slack. A lot of really good people, a lot of good information sharing in there. So some assumptions. One, you're familiar with the MicroTik interface. I'm going to be using Wimbox for this configuration. Uh, you're familiar with basic configurations. You have some understanding of what VPNs and tunnels are, although we're going to talk about it. And also you enjoy watching streaming media. So my predicament, I'm traveling outside of my native country, right? So I'm from the US and I'm in Australia. Uh, the content I want to watch is geolocked, so it's only accessible via known good subnets in the United States. It's a pretty common problem. And I want to be able to access uh, this content remotely, right? This geolocked stuff from Australia while I'm there. I also want to do all of it via my Roku because I'm super lazy and I like to just hook it up to the TV and watch it that way. So, and last, of course, I want this to be as simple as possible. I don't want to have to think about it. So my current configuration, I uh, Roku goes through my Microtech router straight to the internet and I can't get to that US content. It's blocked. So VPN tunnel is going to be my answer. So a VPN basically creates a logical tunnel from point A to point B and dumps my uh, data out at the far side. So I'm creating a tunnel from Australia, my router there, to the US and it's gonna dump out at the US site. So therefore, it will appear as if it's being sourced from the United States, even though it's really being sourced from Australia, going through the US, going to the streaming service, and then coming back through that tunnel. So there are multiple VPN types, especially on a MicroTik. They give you so many options. These are some of them. That last one may be made up. So on your tunnels, there are options for secure or non-secure. So do I need to have this information encrypted? And if I do, how, um, how complex does that encryption need to be? In this instance, it's just streaming video and I super don't care if anybody sees it. So it's kind of a non-issue for me. Um, you also have to keep in mind that different tunnel types consume different amount of resources on the router, right? So a lot of these are CPU based um, encoding, right? These tunnels. So it has to go through the CPU. So there's going to be some amount of CPU cycles associated with that and generally the more complex the encryption um, the more load it's going to put on your router. Some of those routers depending on what you're doing actually have hardware offload for the encryption so keep all of that in mind. So some tunnel types also uh, require the endpoints to have known IPs right so like GRE tunnels really want you to know what the IP is on both sides and things like that. So in this instance Good dynamic peer options are going to be PPTP, L2TP, OpenVPN, things like that. So for me, I really don't care about encryption. Um, there's really low throughput on this, right? There's not streaming a lot, maybe a few megabits per second. Um, so I can really use any tunneling technology. So I'm going to use the uh, kind of the least resource intensive one. So VPN endpoint types. You can tunnel to your home microtech, right? Just the router at your house off of your cable modem or DSL, but you have to keep in mind your upload limit. So if you've got DSL that's say 30 megabits down and one megabit up, um, theoretically that would be good enough for streaming at your house, but since all this tunnel information actually has to transmit via your upload, if you're trying to send four megabits through a one megabit pipe, you're gonna have problems. So just keep that in mind. You could also look at a tunnel service like PureVPN or ExpressVPN. It's just one of the services you can go to online. They have lots of different endpoints that you can um, 
uh, connect to to tunnel through. But you have to keep in mind that a lot of these time, a lot of times rather, uh, these subnets get blacklisted by the streaming services because they know people are going to go to these services, so they purchase accounts, figure out what the IP space is, and they'll blacklist those guys. So that's kind of a negative against them. You can also tunnel to a data center, so either a physical router, you know, a router board somewhere in there, or like a CHR. Um, you know, if you know anybody that works at a data center, you could probably make friends with them, and they can hook you up. Uh, here, you get consistent service. Data centers are usually very consistent, and generally, there's no blacklisting associated with those guys. Their IP spaces are usually pretty clean, so it's a fairly good option. You could also theoretically um, do kind of a VPS service and spin up like a Linux OS and just do a, a tunnel to one of those. Uh, so for us, we're going to create a tunnel from our Australian router to the US router. We're going to use PPTP because it's the lightest, so it's going to put the least amount of load on the router. Um, I'm going to tunnel all of my Roku's traffic, so just that one IP, 192.168.10.1. Inside my network is going to get tunneled, and I'm going to NAT all of the Roku's traffic at the US side when it comes out, right? So that it appears to be sourced from the US. So let's start our configuration. There we go. All right, so from the Roku, I'm going to test going to my this is the theoretical streaming service 16501. So you can see it just takes one hop to my router and then to the internet and it's there. All right, it's just for reference. I'm going to then switch over to the US router. I'm going to create the PPTP server and really I'm just using the least amount of options required here. So I'm turning on the server and I'm creating a secret. So secret's going to be a username and password for it. It's going to be Roku and Roku password very simple and then I'm going to create a local address so this is the when this tunnel interface comes up local address is what this router is going to get remote address is what IP is going to be assigned to the uh, dialed in user popping over to the Australian router I'm going to now create my PPTP client I want to name it something useful so I'm going to name it PPTP USA I'm going to give it the IP address of my US router, 16401, and then username Roku and Roku password. Very simple. And I'm going to leave everything default here. As you can see, the little R next to PPTP is for running. Go to status. You can see the local address was assigned and the remote address. So 4.4.4.3 is the router at the far end over in the US. So we're going to use that in a minute. First, we're going to create a NAT rule that says anything going out of that PPTP interface. So I'm in Australia. Anything going out of that PPTP over to the US, go ahead and masquerade it. That way, the US router knows how to get back to this kit. It's kind of dirty, easy way of doing that. Now I'm going to create a route. I'm going to create a static route that's going to go to the US router, 4.4.4.3. That's his IP. I'm going to put it in his own routing table. You do that by creating a routing mark. I'm just going to name it Roku. Very simple. Now I want to designate which traffic is going to go across this. I'm just going to do it with a simple route rule. In here, I'm going to say if it's sourced from my Roku, I'm going to put in the Roku IP address and I'm going to leave everything else blank. So it's basically anything coming from this cat. Look up in table Roku. So he's going to use that default route across the PPTP tunnel. So I should be able to jump back over to the Roku. You can see the previous. It only took two hops. Now it's taking three. You can see after my primary router, the next hop is the tunnel interface and then it gets to the streaming service. So it's now going. Um, as per this diagram, it's going through the tunnel over to the US to the streaming service and then back through the tunnel. So now I've got the same problem in reverse. So all the local Australian content that I want to stream to my Roku is being forced via the US, so it's getting geolocked. 
that's no fun. So I need a simple way to fix that so that I can switch the tunnel on and off, right? So if I want to get to that Australian content, I turn the tunnel off and uh, I reach it just via my normal internet connection. If I want to get to the US stuff, I turn the tunnel back on and it goes back through. So my simple solution, I'm calling it a packet switch here. So I've got some magic in the router so that if I browse to 4.4.4.1, it will turn that, um, that uh, route rule off. So none of the tunnel traffic will go over the tunnel, or rather none of the Roku traffic will go over the tunnel. It'll just go straight to the internet. Now if I were to browse to 4.4.4.2, it will turn that rule back on, and then it will go across the tunnel to the U.S. I'm using this beautiful website I made right here, which is really just, uh, if you hit VPN on, it browses to 4.4.4.1. If you hit VPN, um, rather if you hit VPN off, it goes to dot one. If you hit VPN on, it goes to dot two. Um, and those will kick off some firewall rules that will also use some address lists and net watching combination. So let's see these things be configured so odd how it does this with a video at first before it kicks on so we're in the australian router i'm creating a loopback interface so you just go to bridge add a bridge don't put any ports on it you got a loopback so that's an always up always on interface now i'm going to add 4.4.4.1 and dot two to that loopback interface that way i've got ip addresses that are always going to be up right i can always ping them this is what the netwatch script is going to watch so I'm going to paste in my special firewall rules because I'm too lazy to enter all that in. But then I'm going to review it here really quick. IP firewall. Filter rules. So you can see at the top I've got two drop rules. So one is if it's sourced from tunnel off and it's going to 4.4.4.1, drop it. Same thing here, only tunnel on address list going to 4.4.4.2, drop it. This rule says if you're going to 4.4.4.1 and you're doing anything TCP, add it to that tunnel off address list for six seconds. And here it's the dot two address. So in essence, if you browse these guys, it will add their address list um, dynamically in for six seconds and it'll drop traffic to that host. So we're gonna create a netwatch script that's pinging those internal IPs. Here's the dot one. I'm going to change the interval to something other than one minute. How about every five seconds? Or rather, interval is going to be five seconds. Here we're going to do uh, IP route rule set disable for that zero rule, which is the only one we have. And we're going to say yes, because if it can't ping 4.4.4.1, it'll disable it. Now I'm going to copy that, change it to two, and set the script so that it enables the rule, so it turns the rule back on. Very simple. Now I'm going to rearrange everything so that you can see it all at once. Well, actually, first I guess I'm going to go ahead and add a comment. You want to make sure to always add comments to anything that will allow it. Most of the time I put my name and the date uh, and the purpose for whatever this thing is. So quick rearranging. You want to be able to see the Netwatch script. You want to be able to see the address list magically appear. And you want to see the route rule, disable and enable. So off screen right now, I'm going over and I'm clicking the turn off, the VPN off button, which should hit the uh, firewall filter rule. It will dynamically create one for 4.4.1. Look up here at the net watch. You'll see it go down, which kicks off the down script, which then in the route rule disables it. Perfect. Now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go click the VPN on button. It's going to send packets through the filter. The filter will pick up those. It'll add the address to the address list 4.4.2. Uh, see it go down and then the down rule enables the rule. So basically a simple turn on, turn off. That timing, if it's a little tight, if it's not quite working on your router, you can adjust it a little bit. No big deal. So here's our host, our test Roku, right? You can see it's going through the tunnel because the tunnel's on right now. We're going to go back 
on my cell phone, I'll click the VPN off button. Again, it's going to go through, hit it, create the address list up on the net watch. You'll see it go down momentarily. The down rule turns the tunnel off. We'll switch back to the Roku and we'll test. And now you can see it only takes two hops. So it goes direct. So a very simple method to turn the uh, tunnel traffic off and on. So alternatives, you could do say like a layer seven inspection to a log. So again, send traffic that's looking for layer seven inspection stuff and it'll put a message in the log and you've got a script that's constantly watching the log every few seconds that will um, activate on that. You could have an external web server that whenever you hit it, it remotes into your microtick and makes the adjustments for you, either via the API or SSHing in, something like that. Uh, you could open the Winbox and just make the change manually. Um, but I was thinking, what is the absolute simplest thing? So say, what could you give your mom and have her activate? She could open her phone on a browser page that she has, you know, uh, favorited or whatever and click on or off. It makes it very simple. Or you could really just, you know, not watch so much TV. That's also an option. So any questions? Drop them down below. Um, I thank you guys for watching. You should have all the links to the scripts in the uh, description uh, or in this blog post, depending on how you're finding this. Uh, if you find it useful, let me know. If you have a better way, let me know. Um, again, this is really just sort of uh, proof of concept, and I love tinkering with the microticks. I suppose you guys probably do too, so thanks for watching, and hope to hear from you. Thanks and bye.